All right, thank you very much. Hello, everybody. It's your good friend, Possible here. And I'm back in action with another look at another lost classic from the days of yesteryear. We're talking about the 70s. We're getting ready for Halloween, looking at some of the foreign, ho foreign horror movies of way back when. And I'm talking way back when. This is from the 70s. And it's from Italy. The great giallo movies like The Black Belly of the Tarantula, The Killer Must Kill Again, and other such movies. This one was supposed to be one of the best Giallo movies ever made, according to the guy who wrote th that article. And boy, was he wrong. You really want to see one of the best ones? It's, it's like, your vice is a locked door and I have the key. That one was a good one. Crazy ending with twist upon twist within twist. This one, however, was pretty straightforward. You got a serial killer out there wanting to kill a bunch of women for some reason. And he does it in the most boring part imaginable. He basically has this needle that he injects in the back of their necks in such a way that that alone would have killed them. But instead it just knocks them out. Doesn't really knock them out unconscious. It's one of those things where they can't move, but they're aware of everything that's happening. This was one of the first time that kind of idea came about, I believe. There might have been an earlier movie like that. If there is, let me know. I would like to see that movie. But this is the idea that this is gonna, he's going to slice somebody up. But this person can't move, and this person can't go to sleep. They can, they're going to experience everything. What happens is one of his victims was married to a guy who is sort of a jerk. So he becomes our prime suspect. He is on the run, and he's trying to figure out who did it also, ignoring the fact that this is done in a very peculiar manner. And he, at one point, he even gets into the cop's car behind him and holds a gun to him and says, just leave me alone. Let me find out who did this on my own. It's like, dude, we're cops. You're the prime suspect. We're not going to leave you alone. Are you crazy? But he's able to run away and escape anyway. Um, I didn't like him. I liked when he got his comeuppance anyway. That's not my problem with the black belly of the tarantula. My problem with the black belly of the tarantula was its pacing, very slow, and its focus. We spent too much time on the lead cop's personal life. Not to mention the fact that the lead cop was kind of a wuss. You know, not the kind of cop you would ever want to have in your police department. The kind of guy who would let these guys go or something. Not exactly the brightest bulb in the door. And they threw stuff in the movie that just didn't make sense. And they never explained why they did it, or nor did they explain what purpose it served. To give you an example, while he was making love to his girlfriend, the bag, the killer decides to film it and show it to the police department. And he just sits there and lets it happen. He doesn't just jump up and shut off the, the uh, movie projector. Yes, movie projector. That's how old this movie is. Um, Black Belly the Tarantula could have been much better. Standard giallo, don't get me wrong. High body count is really what makes it what it is. Uh, interesting mystery about who actually did it, even though right now I forget who done it. It doesn't matter. Um, but ultimately, I gotta give this one a pass, guys. I didn't care for it. It was just too boring, you know, and too out of focus. We're supposed to be hunting a killer who's slaughtering people, not worrying about this cop's self-esteem. That's just me. All right, that's it for me for now, though. We will see you guys at the theaters.